Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about what's wrong with my 2002 AP1 Honda S2000. Now it actually is in pretty good shape uh, but you know the car is 14 years old. It's got about 105,000 miles on it so there are some preventative things uh, that I would like to do before I really thrash on it. Um, so we're going to be going over a few of the little problems with the car um, and some of the projects that I'll probably be taking on first uh, before actually driving it very hard or you know uh, doing any modifications. So so let's take a look under the hood. Okay, so like I mentioned, nothing too major, uh, but one of the things I noticed immediately when the car pulled up uh, before I was going to test drive it and check it out uh, was that the engine was rattling uh, while it was idling warm. And so I did a little reading online. It seems like these timing chain tensioners uh, are a pretty common failure point. Uh, they'll start to go, and so you'll start to hear that timing chain in there rattle a bit uh, when it heats up. So I actually took the car in uh, to the Subaru dealership where I'm getting my new Crosstrek. They went ahead and looked over the whole car uh, before I purchased it as well. Um, and they confirmed that, yep, that timing chain tensioner is going bad. So I do need to replace that. There's also uh, some videos of how to fix it. You can kind of sand down the worm gear that's in there. Uh, so that's one of the things. Another thing we've got, um, just a little bit of oil dripping out here at the front of this. Uh, this is a bolt and it matches up with the timing chain in there. Um, not a bad leak. Honestly, I was looking at some pictures and there's some that are a lot worse than this. Um, and this is all I've seen since I've driven it. So I don't think it's too bad, but I went ahead and ordered an O-ring. It's like a, I don't know, a dollar part. Um, and you can back this out apparently a little bit, just enough so that you can get that O-ring on, pop that on, and then put it back in. Um, you do want to make sure that you don't remove this because then you're going to drop some parts down in your engine uh, So you can apparently back it out just a little bit someone correct me if I'm wrong But I was doing a little reading and it seems like uh, that's the easiest way to do it So I went ahead and ordered an o-ring for that actually I never even checked the uh, air box here You can see so this is for propping up the hood. Um, I don't need to be using this broomstick, but it just gave me a better view um, So we'll go ahead and look see what's going on with that air filter in here. See how that looks well, that's pretty easy to remove. Um, and yeah, that looks brand new, so I don't think I need to replace that anytime soon. I'm sure some people will be telling me to get rid of this stock air box, uh, but regardless, that looks to be in good shape at the moment. Another issue uh, is about a quart low on oil, and the previous owner said they just changed the oil, so either it's burning oil really fast. Um, actually, it looks to be up here this time. I don't know, this thing seems to never measure the same whenever I pull it out. Uh, but anyways, they said uh, when I took it to the Subaru dealership that it was about a quart low. Um, the previous owner was certain that it was fine, uh, but regardless, I may end up adding a little bit of oil and maybe changing it myself just so I know what oil's in there. And you know, I certainly don't think it's going to be something uh, that isn't going to burn any oil. Uh, my old Acura just burned a crap ton of oil over time, so you know, this thing revving up to 9,000 RPM, I'm sure it's going to burn a little bit of oil doing that, and I'm not too concerned about it. If it does, I'll just keep up with it. Um, you know, not a big problem. Now, the tech who looked over this, I actually haven't been under the car yet, so I haven't looked at it, but he did say that the oil pan does need to be resealed. One thing I thought was interesting, Honda actually doesn't use a gasket with this oil pan. Uh, they just use Honda Bond. Uh, as like an instant gasket, some RTV basically, uh, that you put around the oil pan and then seal that up. Um, so that may be something I need to redo. Uh, I haven't seen it dripping oil, so I don't think it's too bad, um, but it may be leaking a little bit out of that, so you know, no harm in redoing it. Now that about does it for the engine bay. Uh, it does need to have the transmission fluid changed as well as the uh, rear differential. The rear differential takes SAE 90 oil and then the transmission just uses Honda genuine uh, manual transmission fluid uh, that you can put in there. Um, so both of those seem like pretty easy tasks. I went ahead and ordered some washers for those uh, so I can get that going. Moving on to the interior, fortunately it's actually in really good shape. Uh, the previous owner had the roof replaced about a year ago, so there's a new soft top on it, um, which is in great shape, no leaks, no tears, uh, which is definitely something common when you're looking at used S2000, so it's nice that this is in good shape, still works fine. I um, mean, considering how old this is, it's pretty quick how it goes up and down, uh, so that's nice. Now, the one thing on the interior, which I didn't even notice until I got home, uh, you can see this power outlet just comes right out. So it still works, thankfully, uh, but there's a screw on here uh, which needs to be threaded in uh, with this little locking plate back here to uh, work and not just pull out with it. So apparently you can take some of these panels off and get back there. It looks like it might be a bit of a pain, but we'll see as far as getting that fixed. Uh, fortunately, it still does work, so there's no wiring work that needs to be done. just needs to be screwed down and probably put some thread locker on there so it doesn't move around anymore. 
So that pretty much covers it. Um, you know, like I said, the car is in pretty good shape uh, considering it's 14 years old. Just a couple fluids that I need to change out, that timing chain tensioner. Um, and there is a little bit of rust on the rear control arms, uh, the lower control arms in the back, which I may replace those with time. It's nothing too bad, so honestly it's not urgent, um, but something I could possibly replace them with some aluminum ones or perhaps some painted ones so I don't have to worry about rust on those. Uh, but overall, yeah, the car's in great shape. So let me know. Um, you know, I haven't done too many like DIY videos as far as fixing this kind of stuff, um, but I probably will end up doing it uh, for several of the things I've mentioned. Let me know if that's something you guys would like to see as far as the different projects uh, to get this back in, you know, its perfect shape before kind of thrashing it about and getting into the modifications. Um, or if you don't really want to see that and just skip to the fun stuff. Um, regardless, I'm probably going to be doing uh, several other repair videos anyways, just because it's something I haven't done on the channel, um, like the transmission fluid changing, the differential, uh, as well as that TCT up front. Uh, so let me know what you guys think. Um, and if any of you have tips on any of these uh, things that need to be done, uh, for example, this power outlet right here, if there's some good resources uh, to figure out how to get this stuff changed up, feel free to leave that in the comments. I'd really appreciate it. And if any of you aren't uh, following me on Instagram, that's a great place to kind of keep up to date uh, trips and things like that, as well as, you know, pictures of this S2000, of course. Thanks for watching. Get my binoculars on, see if I can see what's going on. Looks like I'm going to be okay.